Hi, we're going to go to Chapter 11 of Lucky Lure at Arrow Point by Mary Dame. Wake up, Jamie. The rain has stopped. It's a lovely day, and I know you'll be wanting to explore the beach to see what the waves have brought. Put on your rubber boots. Jamie sat up in bed and rubbed his eyes. Grandma must be fooling. He didn't have any rubber boots. Or maybe, well, maybe they'd been in the chest and he hadn't seen them. Look under your bed, Mrs. Turner was laughing. Jamie looked. Minty was there, just waking up. And so were the boots, bright red ones with spurs like cowboys wear. Only rubber ones, of course. Jamie sprang out of bed and tried them on. They looked grand. Grandma, you're even nicer than Santa Claus. Grandma's laugh just bubbled out. If you love me that much, how about eating the breakfast that I've cooked for you? With my boots on, please? I wouldn't have it any other way. Jamie finished his chores in record time, and so did Minty. Together, they raced to the beach. The waves were still big and going slap, slap, slopity slap against the white sand shore. A yellow tin bobbed up and down along the edge, and Jamie leaned far out and fished for it with a stick. It was empty, and he threw it away in disgust. A stick, shaped like a deer head, he pulled above reach of the waves to be saved for his room. A wide board, which looked quite useful, he rescued too. And down in front of the little house, where the fishermen stayed, there was something white. Jamie and Minty hurried to see what it could be, and Jamie hardly limped at all. The white thing was a fish floating belly up in the water. Jamie looked at it in wonder. Do fishes drown, he puzzled. I'll ask Mr. Craig. He'll be sure to know. Playing at the water's edge didn't tire him, but he thought his grandmother might like to know about the fish, and he knew she worried if he stayed away too long. Besides, he was hungry. He never seemed to get filled. He talked steadily when he could find time from eating. His eyes were so bright and his face so round that he didn't look at all like the thin, white, scared little boy who had been lifted off the minto at the beginning of summer. When lunch was over and the dishes done, he persuaded his grandmother to come down to the wharf and wait for the minto while he fished with the new hook. I know that hook is a lucky one, he explained. My father made it, and maybe I can catch that whopper we saw, eh, Grandma? Wouldn't Captain Jones be surprised? And Grandma Turner, too, she smiled, catching up her knitting and following close behind. There was a big bird hovering over the wharf, and watching it, Jamie nearly walked over the edge of the wharf. Minty barked and tugged at the cuff of his blue jeans. Mrs. Turner made a great fuss over the little dog, and Jamie, sobered a little, sat down and dangled his line in the water. Look, look! The big bird dropped like a rock and came up with a fish dangling in his claws. It's the dead one we saw it this morning, so he's not so smart. And I wonder whether fishes drown. Do they, Grandma? Mrs. Turner knitted a pair of a row of plain where she should have knitted pearl. She took off her glasses and polished them on her apron. She frowned. You ask such questions, laddie. I simply don't know. I'm going to ask Mr. Craig when he comes. He'll know. And do you know what? I'm going to fish with two rods. Jimmy held the old rod with the lucky hook on it in one hand, and then the other he held a willow branch he had cut himself and made into a fishing rod with a piece of twine and a bent pin and a dab of dough. And the dab of dough caught five small fish and the lucky hook not even a nibble. He was still fishing with the two rods, when the thump, thump, thump of the Minto's engines caught him by surprise. I thought we'd have to wait a long time yet. Why does the time go so fast, Grandma? Because you're busy, I guess. Now I'll pull up those lines and hold up the fish for the captain to see. And Minty, you keep from under my feet. There's a good dog. A big man stood with his arms full of fishing gear, ready to get off the boat. He wore a plaid jacket and his face was all smiles. Hey there. His voice boomed out so loudly that all the passengers stared. You aren't Jamie Turner, are you? Jamie nodded and held up his fish. Then there must be magic here. Bill Craig laughed as he jumped onto the wharf. You're big and brown and almost fat. I wouldn't have recognized you. I've got a lucky hook, Jamie volunteered, and I'm eating lots and it's fun here. Well, whatever it is, it's good for you. You're doing a fine, fine job, ma'am. 
he told Mrs. Turner. Then he turned to Jamie. Think you're big enough to carry this fine rod of mine? I'll have to put mine away first. Jamie darted into the shed and came out empty-handed. He picked up the fish in one hand and the rod in the other, and he handled both of them as if they were made of gold. That hook of yours now, Mr. Craig explained. A real fisherman would call it a lure, a lucky lure. Jamie liked the sound of that. That's the end of chapter 11.